Namaste yogis and welcome to a quick flow dedicated to our Manipura Chakra, the powerhouse of our body, the seat of I can and I will. Most people associate this with our core area, but more expansively think about it as your solar plexus. So we think solar, we think power, we'll burn a little bit and then we'll twist a little bit to cool it down. So if you're ready, let's begin. Maybe grab yourself a blanket and some blocks and we'll begin in in all fours. From all fours, we'll take our hands under our shoulders, our knees under our hips. And we'll sort of focus on that navel center to the lower rib cage here. So start by taking your hand, right or left, whichever you feel is better, place it on your solar plexus, that place where the soft part of the abdomen starts to meet the rigid aspect of the ribs, and pull in energy here. Press up through the hands, press up through the knees, and really draw the navel center up and in so we feel strong from the start, firm in our foundation. We'll go ahead and place our hand down, imagining that warmth is still the placement of the hand. Press down through the hands, start to tuck your toes, rock your hips back towards your heels, keeping the belly nice and firm. And then roll forward, stack the shoulders over the wrists, lift the knees, toes stay tucked, breathe. Draw the knees back down, sink back towards the heels. Keep the neck nice and long, look forward in between the space of the thumbs. Drawing the navel center up and in, roll the shoulders back over the wrists, lift the knees. Breathe here. Keep the left leg just as it is, but expand the right foot back behind you. The right side of the body is in plank. Keep the left knee hovering. Start to feel that warmth here. Draw the right foot back to the mat. Knees are in line. And then we'll extend the left leg back. The left side of the body is in plank. Starting to feel some fire turning our center body. And then place the left foot in line with the right. Draw the knees down to the mat. Turn the fingertips around so now they face the knees. If you have an Apple Watch, slide it up your wrist so we don't accidentally dial 911. And then rock your hips back towards your heels. Let the belly be soft here, the emphasis being in the wrists. And now if you're on a keyboard quite a bit or on your phone quite a bit, all the way back might be too much. So dig into the fingertips and just lean back as far as the body says okay to. And then keeping the toes tucked, walk the knees in to touch. And I'll turn to face you. Let the hands leave the mat, interlace the fingers, and we'll press the palms away and forward. Draw the navel center in. Think really strong through the center of the body. And start to draw the hands palm side away from the face towards the sky. Reach up, breathe up. And then as you exhale, lean over to the left. As you lean left, let the left hand pull the right side body. Let the neck be nice and long. Feel the right side waist gain some length. And then inhale, come back to center. Press the palms up again. Pull the belly in and lean over to the right this time. Right hand gently pulls the left over. Find space. And then inhale, come back up to center. Release the hands. Shake out the wrists. Roll them out. And then place them back on the mat, untucking your toes. Wiggle your toes, take your knees under your hips once more. And then land the tops of the feet down. So big toenails touch it, little toenails touch. The whole of the foot is spread across the mat. And we'll wander into our sunbird here. So dig in with the left hand, start to expand your right hand forward like you'll shake someone's hand. Be mindful not to lean too much to the left. Try to stay centered. And then extend the left leg back behind you, straighten the leg. Peek back, make sure that the pinky toe points down, the hip points down, and the belly is nice and strong. One time, we'll curl the knee in to the elbow under the body, squeeze in, compress. And then inhale, extend once more, fingertips forward, foot back. Slide the right fingertips out to the right. Take the left foot out to the left. Squeeze the glutes. Find balance. Lift the leg. And then across the body, tap the elbow to the knee. Squeeze. One more time. Expand right and left. Right hand goes out. Left leg goes up. Squeeze. And then place the hand down, the knee down. 
We'll switch to the other side from the belly once more. I think I can and I will. It gets a little bit fiery, I know. Expand the left hand forward. Press down with the right hand, down with the top of the left foot, and extend the right leg back behind you. Again, hopefully there's not a wall behind you, but peek in, look down, make sure that your toes are pointed down, your hip is in line, your belly is pressing in. And then one time, just as before, squeeze elbow to knee, pull it in, and then inhale, expand. Reaching back and forward, start to slide the left hand out to the left, take the right foot out to the left, lift high, squeeze, flex the toes, across the body once more, elbow to knee. And then expand out wide, see how much, feel as though someone's pulling your leg, someone's pulling your arm, and then we'll slide it back to center. We'll extend both legs back behind us this time, coming into our full plank. Now full plank is relative, maybe it's a good day to be on knees, just keep that nice line, belly pulled in, shoulders protracting so we're pressing up through the back side of the heart. And then we'll roll forward and we'll roll back. Same thing if we're on knees, just rolling the shoulders above the fingertips and back. Trying to keep the belly nice and tight, whichever variation you're in. And then we'll land the knees down. We'll take a little rest. Big toes together. Knees go wide. And then start to sink the hips back. Bring the chest down. It's a really great place for a block. Start to slide the block back underneath the hips on whatever height you need. Let the hips rest back and the arms will come out forward. If you're like me and face down just isn't comfortable, you can take your chin to the mat. Or maybe the forehead is lifted here today and we take and stack hands, rest the forehead. I'm just taking two breaths here. Let the belly be really soft here. Let it relax. And then we'll gently wander the hands out, lift back onto our knees. You can remove your block out from your bottom and walk your knees forward. We'll flip over, come onto our backs. From here, we'll place our feet on the mat, just about hips width apart. We'll roll the shoulders in towards the spine. Take the fingertips up towards the sky here. Spread the fingers nice and wide. Think nice long lines of energy. Open up the throat here, so try not to tuck in too tightly. Press down with all four corners of the feet and slowly start to peel the hips up, lift up. From here, press down with the elbows. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Lift the hips a little bit higher. And then maybe slowly start to roll down once more. Keep the hips grounded into the mat. Lift the balls of the feet. Roll the shoulders away from the spine. Slide the hands up the thighs. And as you do, start to lift the upper back. Look forward. Squeeze the low belly. And then gently come down. From here, take your hands out to the sides, just on either side of your hips, drop the toes down. Inhale, lift the upper back, squeeze the belly, fingertips reach forward, hovering off the mat, and then we'll reach to either side. Three, two, one. Draw the hips down, squeeze the, sh or excuse me, draw the hands down, shoulder blades squeeze together. Press down with the hands, elevate the hips. Hands press down now to help support the bridge shape. And we'll walk the soles of the feet in together to touch. Squeeze the inner thighs, press down even more. Draw the right knee into the chest. And then maybe extend the leg. It might feel fine to bend. Hamstrings might not be okay with the extension. Take what works for you. And then bend the knee, draw the right foot down to the mat. Squeeze inner thighs. Big toes touch just for a moment. Press down with the hands. Elevate the left leg. Remember, knee can stay bent or toes can reach. Gently bend the left knee. Draw the hips down. Relax for a moment. Let the knees fall out wide right and left. And if we don't have blocks here and it's a little too much on inner thighs, really nice. You can make fists with your hands right outside the glutes and let those support the thighs. 
or you can relax, rest in. As we rest in, take your hands, right hand over your solar plexus, left hand on top of that, and a mudra for compassion. And we'll just remember that space of I can, I will. So often we're so driven to constantly be doing that we forget these moments of rest. But when we give ourselves these moments of rest, all the work seeps in. Gently use your hands, slide them to the outer edges of your thighs, bring your knees together. Press down through the heels, slide the tailbone towards the feet, and then draw the knees into the chest. Big squeeze. From here, we'll hover the knees over the hips, flex the feet, take the legs about hips width apart. Imagine you're in your chair pose on your back. Take your hands up to the sky, reach fingertips Lengthen, inhale, lift head, neck, and chest straight up. Try to keep the knees hovering over the hips, and then gently come down. Keep the left hand where it is. Take the right hand to the outside of the left leg as you inhale, lift the upper back, cross the body, and come back to center, draw the back down. We'll do that the other side. Inhale, lift straight up, right hand stays in place, and left hand crosses to the right. Inhale back to center, shoulders lift, and then we'll come down one more time. Right hand will reach to the left, inhale, lift up, cross the body, squeeze, back to center, and down. Inhale, lift up, cross the left hand across the body, and up. Lift up a little bit higher, stay up, take the legs up, toes towards the sky, and then flex the feet. On an inhale, tap the toes. On an exhale, come down. Inhale, tap the toes. Exhale, come down. One more. Inhale, tap the toes. Exhale, come down. Wrap the hands behind the head. Let the elbows come wide. Bend the knees. Firm the feet into the ground. Once more, take the tailbone off the mat. Slide it towards the feet. And then we'll cross the right leg over the left. Step down with the left foot. We'll pick the hips up, settle them a little closer to the right edge of the mat, and start to let your knees fall over to the left. Taking this twisted root variation with the hands bound behind our head. In some instances, this is way too much on shoulders and it might feel better to come into goddess arms, the 90 degree bends, or even slide the elbows into the body, just depending on where chest is today. We'll squeeze the inner thighs, draw everything back to center. Step down with the left foot to shimmy the hips into the midline, and then we'll uncross the right leg. We'll let the knees go out wide once more, keep the hands behind the head, press down through the tailbone, squeeze the glutes here, let them support the base of the pose, and as you inhale, crunch up, hold. Extend the arms towards the sky, Kali Mudra interlace, every other finger but the index finger, and then slowly we'll pulse the fingers towards the feet. One more time, come up and hold, and then gentle pulses, keeping the shoulders lifted. Kali Mudra towards the sky. Braid all 10 fingers, place the hands behind the base of the skull, let the elbows come wide. Press down with the feet to draw the knees together. Cross the left leg entirely over the right. Gentlemen, I should have mentioned this on the other side, but if it's uncomfortable, you can cross ankle to thigh. That's a little more generous in space. Step down with the right foot. Shimmy the hips over to the left. You'll feel the body already wants to twist here naturally, and we'll let the legs fall over to the right. Starting to feel maybe a little more length through the left side body. Maybe we're having some gurgles, helping our digestion move along, twisting and churning. We'll squeeze the inner thighs together, draw the knees towards the sky. Step down with the right foot, hips back to the midline. This time, we'll uncross the legs, knock the knees together as you walk the feet out wide, right and left. 
And with an inhale, you'll squeeze the inner thighs, press the tailbone out towards the front of the mat. You'll notice the low back here. If I am in natural position, I can fit my arm under my low back. If I start to press my low back towards the mat, I don't have as much space. The tailbone tucks on purpose. Hands interlace behind the head. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Pull the elbows apart. And then inhale, come up as high as your body will allow. Low back is on the mat. And then we'll pulse. Remembering all the while to breathe. It's so easy to let go of the breath when we're doing the core work. But that's where we find our prana, our energy. That's how we get this chakra series to really work for us, trying to massage and open those places. Gently, slowly take the head down. Unbind the hands from behind the head. Take the elbows out to 90 degree bends. We'll walk the soles of the feet together. Cross the right leg over the left. Again, gentlemen, if you need to take that figure four shape, that is perfect. We'll take the hands into Kali Mudra once more. So extend the index fingers. Feel like you're Kali brandishing her sword, vanquishing all that lethargy, giving ourselves some energy and some power. Reach the fingertips up. Slowly peel the upper back. Point the fingertips towards the knees, squeeze the inner thighs, and then we'll just go side to side here. Working on our obliques, our side body. If you wanna take it up a notch, you can swing the arms overhead as you come up and then around. I like this a little bit more. It's a little bit deeper for me, but if you need, and you're getting a good sensation just going side to side without the overhead, do that for five, four, three, two, and one. Let the body come down. Unwind the legs. Curl the knees into the chest and then rock the knees over to the left. Press your hands into your thighs, squeeze. And then back to center, extend the left arm, let the knees move over to the right, squeeze the thighs together. Inhale back to center, step the right foot down, cross the left over top. Interlace the fingers once more. Inhale, lift the upper back. And then Yogi's Choice, either rock side to side, or squeeze up and over. If you're wondering what that noise is, Clingy Dog is joining us for the second half of this class. The random interruption in the first half was him and his sister barking at the neighbors. So five, squeeze three, cross two, last one, both sides right, left and release walk the feet out wide mini shavasana we're almost done with class take the arms nice and wide take in a big inhale and then as you exhale side out let it go we'll take our hands overhead clasp the palms together interlace the fingers and extend just that first finger Flex the toes a lot. As you come up, slowly fold all the way forward. So we'll inhale, starting to lift the fingers up and over. Slowly the shoulders. Ooh. Lift all the way up and over. Fold. And your fold might look a little bit different than mine. This is a great place to grab a block. Just compress the front body. We've been open in the front body for quite some time, stirring some energy around. It might feel well to your nervous system to just kind of relax, fold in, and take your block any way you need it. We'll be here for about two more breaths, deep belly breaths. See if you can fill up that space. And then gently, slowly lift up. We'll turn so that we are on our bellies. 
On our bellies, we'll walk our hands in line with our floating ribs. We'll press our elbows up towards the sky. We'll tuck our toes. We'll press all the way up into our plank. From our plank, we will turn onto the outside edge of the left foot, inner sole of the right foot. Place that left hand under the left shoulder, and we'll side plank. Vashi Stasana, reach the right hand to the sky. And then as you're ready, use an exhale. Thread the right arm underneath, turn the chest down. We'll do that two more times. Reach up, squeeze, and as you exhale, come underneath. One more time, inhale, reach up. And as you exhale, come underneath. Inhale, reach the arm up towards the sky. Point the index finger towards the sky. And close the rest of the hands into the fist. Slowly start to bring the right hand up and over. Point towards the front edge of your mat. As you do, lift your hips nice and high. Stretch that out. And then gently turn the right hand towards the ground. Come back into our plank. Grip the mat with your right hand. Turn onto the outside of the right foot, inner arch of the left and extend that left hand towards the sky. Squeeze the inner thighs here, pick the hip up, try to stack the shoulders on top of one another. As you inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, turn the left shoulder down, reach underneath the right body. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, reach up. And as you exhale, thread it underneath. Very nice, here. use one more time. Inhale, we're almost done, I promise. And then thread it underneath. Beautiful, inhale, reach the left hand all the way up to the sky and close every finger but the index finger. Lift up and over, point to the front edge of your mat. Squeeze inner thighs together, breathe. Slowly let that left hand come down to the mat. We'll press up just one time into our downward facing dog. Stretch out, pedal your dog out one leg and then the other. We haven't done anything for hamstrings so they're probably cranky, calves are cranky. Turn the outer arms down, make it really strong. And then gently draw the knees down to the mat. Walk the knees towards the wrists. Reach for your blocks. If you don't have blocks handy, you can grab some shoe boxes or some cans. Just take a nice front body opening before we come down to rest. Walk the knees in line with one another. The toes will be pointed back behind you. We'll take our blocks on either side of our ankles. And we'll slowly come into our camel pose using our blocks. We'll take fingertips to the blocks. Start to press the hips forward. Squeeze the glutes here. Give yourself some nice strong balance. Press the hips forward. Start to feel the belly extend. It might be a little bit sore after some of our moves. That's okay, we're finding space. And then before we drop the head back, press the hips forward. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Use that to feel like someone is lifting the center of your chest straight up. It wants to touch the place where the ceiling and the roof, or excuse me, the ceiling and the walls meet. Roll the shoulders back, squeeze a pencil between your shoulder blades, and then start to draw the gaze skyward. Try not to drop it straight back behind you. We're not working to open the throat here. We're just expanding the front side of the body. Breathe, squeeze. Gently draw the hips back. We'll take a nice, easy twist here. You might enjoy sitting on a block, especially if hips can be a little bit tight. We can sit on a block, elevate the hips, stack the ankles. We'll inhale, reach the arms up, gentle side bend to the left, left hand down, right hand comes over. Maybe you bend the elbow, take it all the way down. Just depends on range of motion and how you're feeling and what you've already done today in practice. Press off the left hand, reach up overhead and draw the right hand down. Left hand reaches, expand and open. Press off the right hand, inhale, come up. Take the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers. Take those braided fingers over to the right edge of, edge of the body. Tuck the right elbow behind you and then take the right ear to the right shoulder, breathe. I find a lot in core classes we take way too much tension into the neck. Relax the left shoulder away from the ear. It loves to creep up here. And then just for fun, drag the chin across the chest, left ear to left shoulder. Remember to breathe. 
Roll the chin towards the center of the chest. Lift the head up. Hands go behind you. Braid the fingers the other way, so let go of your bind and take it the other direction. And then scooch them over to the left side. Hide the left elbow. Draw the elbows down. Slowly left ear to left shoulder. You might notice one side is a little more tense than the other. I know this is my crazy side, my side that does not like to do this at all. And that's okay. We all have those imbalances. We all hold tension differently. Draw the chin down all the way over and around right ear to right shoulder. Last time, draw the chin down into the chest, slowly elevate the head. Let's start how, or excuse me, let's end how we started. So we'll take the arms up overhead, interlace the fingers, press the palms away. Drag the right side body over to the left. Maybe this time you turn the left shoulder under, look up, up underneath that right arm. Inhale, drag everything back to center, and then draw everything over to the right. Gaze up, right shoulder moves underneath. And then inhale back to center. Release your hands. If you have a blanket, this might be a really nice place for a blanket. We'll take our blanket and roll it into a roll. Towels work fine, pillows work just as well. We'll come on to our back for our Shavasana, but we'll roll that blanket underneath our knees so that we're easing tension in our hips. We're not straight down and flat. We're relaxing a little bit into the hamstrings as well. We'll take that mudra for compassion. So we'll place our right hand over our solar plexus, our left hand on top, draw the shoulder blades together. Relax the feet, take a few moments to fidget. So it's almost impossible for us to find stillness as soon as we rest down. Fidget as much as you need, fix your clothes. You can even shut me off and just set a timer, relax in. If you're here, just gently start to breathe into your hands, into that place where the rigidity of the ribs meet the soft space of the abdomen. Breathe into that place of power. You can almost see the breath churning and encouraging the chakra there to spin and whirl. And as it spins and whirls in your mind's eye, imagine you're holding that ball of energy in your hands, almost like a little microcosm of you, a little world unto itself. And you might ask yourself, do you need more energy? Do you feel tired? Do you need to cultivate that ball to move, to spin, to whirl? Or are you a little more on the energetic side? Do you find it hard to rest, to relax? Do you need to use your mind to soften the spin? To make it slow down? And it's a personal choice. It's a personal answer. So as we rest here, don't shut down the mind, but instead wonder at what's happening. Let the body rest piece by piece. Notice tension leaving the shoulders, the face. Relax the belly and the feet. And just feel the warmth of your hands and the intention of your energy, either speeding your little microcosm up or settling it down. Gentle for the next few moments, simply breathe. and manifest the energy you need in your practice today.
And you might stay here for a while longer, however long you have. I want to thank you for joining with me for practice. As always, it is a pleasure and a privilege to create sacred space. Namaste.